Okay, guys. So now that you've got you know your software going for binary editor, you've got the quarter horse hooked up and, and ready to go. The last step for most of you uh, is going to be to hook up a wideband uh, for for you know the ability to log your air to fuel ratio, particularly uh, you know at full throttle uh, and under boost, where you're commanding a very rich uh, air to fuel ratio, and the factory sensors can't read that kind of a, a value. Uh, and so it's time to do that. Now there's there's two sides of what you have to do. One, you have to to physically hook up a wire or or connector uh, from the wideband so that you can do the logging. And then there's also some configuration within the software uh, that you have to do to to tell that that's what you're doing. Uh, so let's in this video talk about the the actual wiring and how you hook it up. Now, uh, some widebands, not all of them. Uh, are directly supported by Binary Editor uh, with the addition of a, a particular license where you can use some kind of a digital signal or a serial cable and, and have a direct connection uh, you know, from, the, from your uh, wideband gauge into uh, the quarter horse system for logging. But doing it that way, it doesn't actually use any kind of uh, you know, analog output wires or anything like that coming out of the wideband. It would be it's a totally separate connector that goes directly from the wideband to your laptop. And then, of course, you'd still have the USB from the quarter horse to the laptop. So you'd essentially have two things running into your laptop, but you can log all of it at the same time directly from Binary Editor. So this video, however, is not talking about that. This is for what most of you end up doing, including myself where you're just going to run an analog output wire from the back of your wideband uh, you know, to, to your EGR signal, uh, your EGR valve position. And so what, what we're looking at here, this is your, uh, just a, you know, kind of a side shot of the 60-pin the connector. Uh, for those of you that are uh, not yet familiar with that, and I'm just going to browse through a few different pictures I've got here pulled up. Uh, so your computer's down here in the kick panel. And the main connection uh, that goes to your computer is uh, a big 60 pin harness and you've got all kinds of stuff running into it. So uh, this is what that looks like. Now, what you're ultimately needing to do is you're needing to run a wire from your wideband to pin 27. Now, when I say pin 27, this is specific to, uh, you know, the, the 5 Mustang um, harness. The same concept could apply to virtually any vehicle. You have to figure out where its EGR valve position is and figure out what pin that's on, but on these Fox bodies, it's pin 27. And when you're looking at this connector, you know, once you pull the computer out and you take off the bolt that's in the middle, uh, so you can really pull this harness out of the kick panel and get to it, the way that you know which side 27 is on is that this 204060 along this far edge right here, these three wires are all black or black with green stripe. The opposite end, it won't look like that. So that's how you can very quickly figure out, just orient yourself left side or right side on this connector. And then once you figure out where all those black and black with green stripe wires are, you know that you need to go across the center bolt to the other side of this connector on the middle row of wires. It's the fourth wire in 30, 29, 28, 27. And this wire right here is going to be a brown wire with a light green stripe. So this is the wire that you're, you're looking for. And what you're ultimately going to do is, uh, if you look in the, the instruction manual that came with your wideband, basically every wideband has one wire, and it's usually a very small gauge wire, um, has one wire that comes out that's labeled as a 5 volt analog output signal wire. Um, sometimes we'll talk about it for like external data loggers, things like that. Um, also, to be aware, some widebands will have a second analog output wire that is a one volt output, and that is not the thing that we want to use. That's basically there to simulate a narrow band sensor um, for other types of uses, but we specifically need the five volt uh, analog output where it's not going to work right. So go down into your manual, figure out which wire that is, and when you're installing your wideband, you know that you need to extend that five volt analog output signal wire and you know run that ultimately into pin 27. Now, there's two places that you can do this. So one is where you would actually do it in the kick panel, uh, very close to where this connector is, or you could run your that wire into the engine bay and you can hook up by the EGR valve itself. Now, doing it inside the engine bay is usually the easiest thing to do because that plug is very easily accessible. It's right behind the throttle body. Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, slack on it. So very easy to get to there. Uh, wiring this up inside the kick panel is a little bit tougher just because it's a very tight harness that doesn't have much give. 
uh, and you're going to have to do your soldering or your crimping kind of, you know, in tight quarters there uh, on the floor. But anyways, so what we're looking at here is this is the full pinout. And you notice uh, right here where we've got the EGR valve position sensor, three wires. And you notice the plug itself is kind of D-shaped. The one that we're looking for, pin 27, is the one that's closest to the flat edge of the D. So if you're going to run this into the engine bay and hook up here, that's what you're looking for is, is you go to the throttle body, look at the EGR valve behind it, unplug that connector, look at the wire that's closest to the flat, again, brown with green stripe, and ultimately what you would do is you would just cut this wire, you know, three or four inches from this plug, uh, cut the wire right here, tape off the end that's going back up to the plug. You're going to leave the plug unhooked. Uh, you just tape off that wire and it can just kind of hang out there in the engine bay uh, along with the unhooked connector. And then the lead that's going from here all the way back to your computer, that's where you just need to, to splice in your uh, that, that 5 volt analog output wire. Uh, you can do it with the butt connector, you can do it with solder, or whatever you want to do. Uh, as long as you make a good connection, you should be fine either way. And that's how you would do that. And, uh, you know, and then at that point, it's also important that in your tune, you disable the EGR while you're doing this part of the, the tuning. Even if you want to turn your EGR back on long term and, you know, you're, you need an emissions legal vehicle, fine. Uh, but while you're tuning it using this method, you need to leave this EGR position, uh, you know, unhooked from the EGR valve itself. Uh, and for those of you that, that would like some visual aid for that, uh, here's your throttle body. This guy down at the bottom is the EGR valve coming off of the back of it, and this is where that plug would go. So essentially, again, unplug it, uh, find the, the wire closest to the flat, cut it, you know, give yourself a, a small pigtail so you can reconnect it later if needed, and then run that uh, to your 5-volt your signal, and that's it. If you want a cleaner, more permanent install, maybe you're trying to, you know, do not an emissions thing, you or you've completely gutted EGR and you have no intention to ever put it back in, then uh, for those types of installs, I'd prefer to do it where it's actually spliced in right here. So same thing at the 60 pin connector. Once you find that one you're looking for, you know, pull that harness back about six inches, cut the wire, tape off the end that's heading back to the engine bay. Uh, and then run your wire, you know, along the dash from your wide band, uh, tuck it up neatly, give yourself a little slack, and then just splice it in. Also, you can get the actual Ford uh, specific terminal still that would allow you to do a more clean installation without having to cut anything. Uh, so if you're handy with a pick, you know, you can take off the 60 pin connector, you can work a pick down there very carefully, you could pull that one wire out and just kind of leave it there. Uh, and then if you have the, the correct crimpers and the correct terminal, you know, you could just take this new wire you have for your 5 volt, plug that in, run it, do what you want to do. And when you're ready, just deep in that, take it back out, put your factory stuff back in and doing it that way. Again, it's, it's a really clean install. You're not cutting a single wire uh, and it allows you to kind of go back and forth and, and keep it real, uh, real tidy. So, uh, that's, that's how I personally do it when I'm working with cars that come into our shop. Uh, where, you know, maybe I'm temporarily installing one of my wide bands just to tune the car and I intend to take it back off. I never cut the wire. I just deep in that one, run ours in here and we're good to go. And, and keep in mind too, guys, when you're, when you're running it in this way, kind of directly in, in the uh, kick panel area, you still need to, if you have the EGR present in the engine bay, you still need to unplug that plug, uh, from that side and just leave it disconnected, uh, as long as you're tuning like this. So that's the uh, the the wiring side of what you need to do to make this work. Uh, and then I've got another video that I posted a long time ago that I'll link to uh, in the description that will walk you through the software side of what you configure inside a binary editor uh, so that this stuff works for you. So that's it, guys. Hope this helps. Good luck. Godspeed.